Okay, so uh, it's time for another fruit, and this is another one that I found while doing a foraging trip on the uh, the Steve Brill, the Wild Man Steve Brill uh, foraging tours in in New York City. So I went like a month ago, and that's when I went and I found the choke cherry. That was last month, and that was in Central Park. So I decided to wait like uh, about uh, a month. And I went back, and, they, and I tried a different location as well. He does it at parks like all over New York. So this one was actually in Prospect Park, which is in uh, in Brooklyn, uh, just to see if there was anything that's growing there that isn't growing in Central Park. And like the change of the season, maybe there'd be something I didn't see before. Um, and there was. I found a couple things that were um, pretty interesting that I've never had before. The first thing that I want to talk about is uh, something called a Cornelian cherry. So this is a Cornelian cherry, and it, uh, it's got like the shape of kind of like a, I don't know, like a cranberry or like a coffee berry, and uh, it's like a little, a little soft to the touch when they're perfectly ripe. And what's kind of interesting about these is that um, you pick them when they fall off the tree. Like if you go over to the tree, you want to try it? she likes it. Yeah, if you pick these like straight off the tree, they're usually too sour. It's better to get one after they've fallen. So what you do is you go over to the tree and you grab a branch and you shake it and whatever falls, you pick it up and those are the ones that are that are ready. Uh, so that's what we did on the foraging trip and it worked uh, worked pretty well. We all ended up getting like a nice uh, collection of berries and there were like, like 20 or 30 of us there. So uh, the trees are very productive. And uh, they're not really popular here in the U.S., but they're popular in other countries. I've seen the preserves for sale at, um, like, Eastern European markets. I bought it, like, once, and it tasted terrible, and it was just, like, really, like, woody, because they cooked it with all the seeds, and then when you spread it on toast, you're, like, you get, like, a ton of seeds. Like, they didn't strain them out, so that was, like, weird. Um, but yeah, so I, that's my only experience with Cornelian cherries. They're, they're popular in Turkey and in Iran and in parts of Europe, but here in the U.S. you don't get them, even though they would grow. Yeah, if you get a nice view of that, you see like how dark it is. Uh, this also doesn't have any breaks on it, and it's slightly like squishy. That's how you can tell like it's a ripe berry. When you get one and they are not quite there, like this one, this one here, as you see, is a little bit uh, lighter in color, uh, a little brighter as well. And this one doesn't give at all, and it's got that light color. So this is actually going to be really sour. And what's interesting is that these will ripen like a little bit off the tree. So if you pick it and it's not quite ready yet, uh, and it's tasting really sour, you leave it off the tree for a little bit, put it on your counter, and um, just like you'd like ripen like bananas or like um, like an avocado it'll become ripe over time just off the counter. I'm going to start with the just like the perfectly ripe one. It's good. I mean, it tastes a little bit like if you were to cross a cherry with a cranberry. It's got the cherry flavor, but it's much more tart, even like that kind of like succulent, like dark one was very tart. And if I'm going to eat one like this, yeah, that's not ready at all. Yeah, that's no good. That one's just like really sour and it also gives you like a little bit of like dry mouth. So one of the popular ways of eating this in uh, Turkey and Iran is to eat it with salt. So I'm going to take a little bit of, of salt here and one of these berries and see what that's all about. Okay. So here's one with some salt on it. Mmm. Oh. Ah. This is bringing back, um, oh, uh, that's like really intense. I mean, that's 
just like a slap in the face with like sour and salt. Not refreshing at all. But if you want like re something really, really intense and you want it all at once, then yeah, take one of those cherries and put some salt on it. It reminds me a little bit of the uh, Parissa Corundus, which I had in Thailand, uh, which was like the same thing, like a very tart, like cranberry kind of tasting fruit, but uh, on its own, just like really, really sour. And you put like salt on it as well. Uh, this, I don't know, I don't, I don't do this whole salt on fruit thing, you know, not with things that are like this intense as it is. Uh, but if you like that kind of thing, then yeah, I, I would go for this. For me, I think this needs some sugar. I'm going to make something called a Sharbat, which is a um, something that's popular in those parts of the world, like Turkey, Iran, and uh, also like India, it's very popular. And what it is, is you basically make like a concentrate out of these, or another kind of a fruit or a spice, and you... Um, when you want to have the sherbet, you take the concentrate and you add some water to it. So it's basically you're making like a syrup. I have about a half a cup of berries, which is not a lot. Um, and to do that, you basically need uh, one part berries, one part water, so half cup water, and two parts sugar. So one cup of sugar to the um, half a cup of water, and you let this come to a uh, like a gentle boil. So I'm going to take my cherries now, about a half a cup, and that goes inside the mixture. It's been about 10 minutes, and as you can see, it's come to a very nice boil here. It's also uh, gotten quite dark, so it's definitely getting that uh, the juice out of there. So I'm going to try to get like a little more flavor out of these guys before getting rid of them. So, let me just mush these guys up. That's 10 minutes, and I'm going to turn off the heat and let this cool down a little bit, because right now it is just like molten lava. All right, it is uh, pretty cool now. So I'm gonna try straining all this fun stuff out. I've got my little container here, got a strainer, see how this goes. It's really thick, so I don't know. <laughs> it might give me some issues getting through such like a fine sieve, but let's see how it goes. Yeah, it's doing it. Slowly, but doing it. This is like really action-packed watching syrup slowly drain through a, uh, a sifter, but um, yeah, I'm gonna jump ahead. Okay, there it is. This lovely stuff. It uh, looks pretty good. I, I actually added like a little water to it, I won't lie, um, just to, uh, while it was cooking, because it was getting kind of thick. I added maybe... Uh, like two tablespoons of water, maybe like a fourth cup at the most. It wasn't like, it wasn't like a whole lot, but yeah, even from just like a little half cup of fruit, that that yielded quite a bit. That's a decent amount of syrup there. I think that's plenty for me. I'm gonna let it uh, cool, and I'm gonna do this properly and add some water to it uh, once it cools down, and um, do that tomorrow. So this is going in the fridge. Here it is after being um, in the fridge overnight, if you look at it, it's pretty thick. You know, it's a little bit thicker than um, like a normal, you know, flavoring syrup that you'd use for like your coffee or something. Okay, there you go. So there's about like a tablespoon of the uh, the syrup in there, and I'm actually gonna do something um, a little off the books. I'm gonna use some club soda that way. Um, you know, it's more like a like a soda and less like a juice. So maybe I'll just put a little bit in here first, just um, kind of disperse it a little bit. I don't want to like kill like all the bubbles in this. So let me just mix this. Yeah, it's not like 
it's still like a little bit uh, thick, so it's not like it's not like thinning out very quickly. So another reason, I think like if, if you were to make this, uh, maybe like double the water. So what I'll probably do is I'll actually add water to this. So next time I want to use it, it's not like such a pain. Just try it as is. Let me fill some more of this in here. Give it a little stir. There we go. So let's see if that's flavorful enough. I think that that was enough syrup, um, like one tablespoon to, what is this, maybe like a cup of liquid is, uh, is enough, at least, you know, for the, for the batch that I made, because it is quite flavorful, just has no sourness to it, which is kind of weird, because like eating them fresh, especially since I used like some of the unripe, um, or not like 100% ripe berries, those were very, very sour. This has no sourness. And because of that, it doesn't really remind me of cherries anymore. Like before they kind of tasted like a little bit like a sour cherry. This is far more mellower um, with the sugar added to it. So I would say this is not, it does have like a little bit of a berry flavor, like a little bit of like a cherry flavor, I guess, or like another kind of berry. Maybe like a little bit like a strawberry or a raspberry flavor. But what stands out more is like a... Like a plum flavor. Yeah, just like a very like sugary, um, mellow fruit. If you were to take the berries of different ripenesses like I did and make a concentrate out of it, I think this is a good way to utilize, um, utilize like wild fruit. You know, if you have a tree in the yard or something, uh, it's gonna be hard to gauge, it's gonna be hard to make them like all like the same level of ripeness just to eat them fresh. You'd have to like pick through them, you know, but this is a way to kind of like use that and use all the berries and make something out of it that you can, you can just like have all together. Uh, so if I were to find cornelian cherries again, I would probably do the same thing or maybe like make a jam or something. Honestly, you could probably use this concentrate, um, as a jam. I mean, if you would put like this in some yogurt or something, um, it would work just fine. So, uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to use the rest of this. It's, it's nice. It's a nice flavor. I think I like the Charbat better than the fresh fruit. So if you're going to pick the fresh fruit, you may try them. But if you're not so wild about Cornelian cherries, this, uh, this brings like a whole new flavor to the party. So um, yeah, uh, if you get the chance, check it out. Hey guys, don't click out on the window just yet, okay? Listen to me for one second. I just want to take a quick moment and tell you about my Patreon page that I just started. This is a way for fans of my series to help contribute and make my show even greater and to expand on content, get new videos, and give you some cool bonuses and rewards. So if you have a moment, just click on this video right here, click on me, and it'll be it'll take you to my Patreon page where you can learn more. Thank you so much for watching guys. Bye bye. I, I made this video too long. Um yeah, you can, if you don't want to go to the Patreon page, it's okay. Um, you can also click on one of these fruit videos. There's, there's one over here, you can go to the, the next episode, and you can go down over here to go to the last week's episode, and yeah. Oh yeah, sub subscribe. Subscribing is, is helpful, and um, like it, like it's good, L liking it is good. Um, and leave a comment if you want to leave a comment, you know, tell me what you think, if you liked it, you hated it. Yeah, um, okay, that's it. Bye-bye.